uses. And that's a comment that I continually got with, wow, this is un unheard of. Not only to meet the department head, but to meet the faculty member. Generally, it's a staff person that they would use for that presentation. And the other, I think, uh, real positive is, is that building. That's a beautiful building. And uh, there, the, uh, the new wing was built in 2011, and the old wing, the south wing, was remodeled uh, last year. And having that infrastructure, and I can't emphasize when the university and the Board of Regents can make that step and uh, really improve the infrastructure. Uh, because, you know, parents come in, they're looking at very nice facilities elsewhere. I think that's been a very helpful thing for us. Um, and our unit off lab is second to none. So students, students see that. <laughs> but all that said, still don't know. <laughs> Other questions? All right. Thanks, sir. I just want to point out real quick that uh, all of our women's distance records from 800 to 10,000 meters are held by Ken Mies. So. And, and about five years ago, the entire starting volleyball team was Ken Mies. <laughs> yes. So definitely an important part for us and what we do uh, in recruiting is having a strong Ken Mies program. Uh, I also woke up this morning, took a look out the window, and said, oh, Optors must be right around the corner. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of a really critical time for us. We went up to uh, Black Hill State last weekend for a last chance meet. Took a took about uh, just shy of half our, our squad up there for, for a last shot at uh, trying to qualify for indoor conference. And uh, had some really good, good pieces come out of it. We had uh, uh, Jayla Jarnigan really really kick, uh, kicked herself up a notch. She took things up to, she's now two centimeter shot, number one in the conference. She's tied for 14th in the nation in the weight throw. Uh, and she also moved herself up, uh, I think she picked up about another foot on her shot this weekend, uh, which is huge. And uh, the, the throwers as a whole really were just uh, on a roll today. So I brought two of them with me. I'll bring them up here in just a minute. but. Uh, the uh, Jenna Seiler is one of the ones who will come up here in a minute. Uh, Jenna had uh, she had a out of foot PR in both the weight and in the uh, shot this weekend. Moved her into a scoring position going into the conference meet, and uh, and then uh, Lisa McClure had a really strong day. She didn't quite PR in either one, but I think she was within like two inches on both. Uh, and uh, then on the guy side, West Steve Draft. Uh, who was here a couple weeks ago with me, came out and had a really strong day. He put out his second best marks of the season, so did Dakin Nolan, who's going to come up in a minute as well. Uh, and uh, I'll talk more about them in just a minute here. But really, really strong performances. We got the conference uh, entries in on uh, Saturday night. Everything came out yesterday. And for the most part, things with conference meets, you never quite know because it's not just what does the performance look, look like, which is just a descending order of best marks. It's what are coaches thinking? What are they wanting to do with this person or that person? And, and uh, it's always interesting to see how things shake out. You know, who gets it, you know, who lucks out and gets into something that you didn't think that they had a shot at, and who ends up who you think maybe had a shot and doesn't get in, and things like that. And uh, so when it all shook out, we wound up with 26 athletes that were taken down to the conference meet, which is uh, about four more than we took last year. So that's a good step in the right direction for us. Uh, Coach Hawkinson was working on trying to figure out what the scoring looked like after everything broke out. So I don't have a whole lot to give you there, but I can tell you right now, Colorado's, Colorado Mines, Western, uh, Adams, they'll all be very, very tough this year. Uh, Adams, is following their usual recipe. They're trying to trying to get it with the distance runners. Western and Colorado Mines are, are much more balanced, uh, and uh, UCCS will definitely make, make an impact in the in the jumps. Where we're looking to make our biggest impact is going to be in the jumps and in the throws. Right now, uh, we 
had uh, had a few people who were on the outside looking in. Unfortunately, uh, we had a guy miss the 800 by 0.03 seconds, uh, which is just painful. Um, we had another guy miss in the long jump by two inches. Uh, but where we look really, really strong is women's vault. Women's vault, we have the first and seventh ranked vaulters in the conference. Uh, they finally, finally had another vaulter go over four meters just this last weekend. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but things are looking really good there. Uh, the uh, men's vault, we should score, should score a few points uh, as well from Travis Kansasser. <coughs> Jumps, uh, high jump is one that we got four, we got three women, or three men and one, one lady into the high jump. So we, we're really hoping we can come away with some points in that one as well. And then, uh, then it's the throws. Uh, and we're going to be looking a lot to these guys to, to bring us some points. If you guys want to go ahead and come on up. Uh, Dakin is sitting uh, sitting seventh, I think, in the uh, weight throw right now, and uh, Jenna's sitting about the same. Oops, slide on this right there. Uh, so we're we're looking forward to seeing what they can do. Jenna Jenna had a really strong year last year as a senior in high school, and and really just carried things off. Dakin kind of took a different route. He decided to get hurt his senior year of high school, and so we spent last year trying to get him rehabbed and and uh, teach him the weight throw and really seems to have taken to it. And, and uh, so he's, he's looking to, to try and do some damage there as well. Um, quick introduction, my name is Dave Nolan. Uh, I'm part of the uh, Harvard Track and Field team. Uh, I come from a small town in Wisconsin. Um, oh, my major is chemical engineering. Uh, actually built my life. Dr. Winter said, the unit ops lab is a big part of my decision to come here. Um, as far as being a hard rocker goes, it really just allows me to continue doing what I love while pursuing a world class education. So that's huge. I couldn't thank the institution enough. So that's a little bit about me. I'll pass it on to Jenna. I'm Jenna Snyder. I'm a freshman this year, uh, so I think brand new. I came here as a chemical engineer, uh, but I already switched to MET just because of what I wanted to go into. And this school still provides exactly what I, I wanted, which is I did very well, which I guess they try to get to go into. So then I'm going to go into the field. Um, I'm from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, so the bigger town, the bigger town. Um, and for me, a uh, big part of being in a school is just like the atmosphere in a smaller school. I know a lot of a lot more people on campus and everyone kind of knows each other and there's how a friend and everything else is. Um, there's not just a bunch of people just from us and kind of stop and talk to people and everyone kind of knows each other and a lot of those people can be successful. I cannot push me that kind of thing too. And it helps them in the Any questions? Are you guys just in the weight throw or are you in the weight? I'm just in the weight. Oh, I'm in the weight in the Any questions? All right, thank you. We talked about it after the game. Um, you know, we, we also talked about if you're down 21 and you almost come back and beat a team, what does that tell you? That tells you that you probably should have beat it by 21. Um, so we did bounce back from that, and, you know, we, we've been talking about controlling what we can control into the playoffs. And we needed to get one win to clinch um, a spot in the playoffs, and we didn't get that against Colorado Springs. So that put a little more pressure on us. Um, for Saturday's game against Colorado Mines. But we came out ready, they came out focused, which was good, because that's what we talked about from the night before. Um, 
But then shots didn't fall in that first quarter, for those of you that watched the game or saw the score. Um, even I looked up at one point, and it was 19-2, to two, and I just thought, boy, this is going to be a long night if this is how it continues to go. Um, shots weren't falling for us. Everything was falling for them. Um, and then we closed out the quarter, scoring four quick points right before the quarter ended. And then after that, it was kind of a blur for me. I didn't realize, I think Brad said in our um, write-up that it was 15 points in a minute and 30 seconds. Um, all I know is it was a lot of fun. We were doing a lot of cheering from the bench, and all of a sudden it was a tie game, 21-21. <coughs> so, again, we talked about after the game, if you're down 19 to a team, it means you should probably beat them by 19. And I also told the girls, it'd be nice if we didn't have those, because they really stressed their coach out. Um, and I got a cold, and so then we've been joking that they gave me the cold because they stressed me out too much in those two games with those, those big deficits to begin with. But um, really proud of our effort against Colorado Mines. You know, to start the game, everybody's faces were a little bit worried, because we were down 19-2 to two and no shots were going in. And by halftime, I just saw looks of determined faces. Everybody was like, yep, we're going to win this game. And I will tell you, at halftime, I told the team we needed to attack the rim. We ended with 16 threes. So <laughs> sometimes Coach knows what she's talking about. Sometimes she doesn't, I guess. Um, but we shot the heck out of the ball. Um, just did a great job of executing down the stretch in the second half. Did a great job of playing defense. Um, you know, Michaela Shackley worked her butt off trying to guard Denali Pinto. Um, she ended up with 31 points, but you know, some of those are off of ball screens where it involves more people helping. Um, and, you know, like I told the team, they have talented players, but I think we have a really talented team. And we stuck together and we played like a team against Colorado Mines, and that's what helped us despite her 31 points against us. Um, down the stretch, you know, we drew up a play, and I've been talking all season about luck of the bounce. And there's quite a few games that we didn't get the luck of the bounce. And Saturday, it finally came back around to us, um, and literally, Shaq's, ba Shaq's basket hit like the backboard and three different spots on the rim. I didn't even see it go in. Um, I saw it leave her hands, and I was like, oh man, that's not going in. So I was looking at everybody else yelling at them to rebound, and pretty soon Colorado Mines was taking the ball out of the basket. I was like, wait, what just happened? But I was screaming play defense. Um, I had to go back and watch the film to see how Shaq's shot did find its way into the, into the basket. But, very excited, so proud of uh, these girls' efforts. Um, I brought Cooper Courtney with me today. She came at our very first luncheon. Um, she has class every single Tuesday, but today, thankfully, it was canceled, so she could come talk to you guys. Um, I know I've said it before, but our seniors are truly the reason why we were playing the way we were playing. Um, they've done a great job of buying into what I've brought to the table, and they've done a great job of leading their teammates and holding them to a higher standard and a higher expectation. Um, and in games like Saturday, when it's we're down and we're trying to make it trying to make a comeback, or in games that we're close and we're trying to really value every possession and get defensive stops, it's these guys who make that difference. Um, you know, I can say something in a timeout, but then they're in a little huddle too, and they're determined. And I can't say enough about the senior class. Um, can't say enough about Coop. Cooper's not a point guard. You know, she didn't come here to play point guard. And that was a role that I asked her to take on this year. And at first she was, she was a little, little worried about it, um, but she embraced it and has done a phenomenal job of leading our team. Um, you know, one of the talks I had with her was, I know you don't want to be a point guard, Coop, but I trust you with the ball out there. I trust you to make good decisions, and that's what our team needs. And she just has rolled with it. I'm very proud of her for what she's done this senior year in terms of, you know, playing on a bum knee, that she's had to work back from, which is always hard, and then changing positions. So, can't say enough about Coop. Very proud of her. Love having her on our team. She's also the personality of our team. Um, keeps everybody laughing. Um, keeps everybody having a good time. And just make sure that we're all as a team. Like I said, that's that's really huge for our seniors. Um, Brad, do you want to do highlights or let Coop talk? We'll <coughs> We just chose highlights from college <coughs> minds this time. <laughs> As you guys can see, the score is 4 to 21. Ryan hits a layup to end the first quarter. And then after that, we just start rolling. 15 to 0 to start the second quarter.
Shaq hit two threes on the night. That was the first one. You guys know what the second one was? Great steal by Molly. Sammy shot extremely well. She went seven to 10 from the three-point line for us. Ryan went seven of nine from the three-point line for us. Ryan's actually second in the nation right now in field goal percentage. Um, and the only girl that's beaten her has only made 75 threes and Ryan's made 95. And great ball movement. Lisa Sammy getting a three. Anna going to work on the inside. And again with the and one play. <coughs> great post to post action. Anna and Naomi. Naomi did a great job of stepping in. Um, Molly fouled out the end of the game and Naomi had to step in and play some offense and defense for us and did a great job as a freshman in that position. This is when we're rolling in the fourth quarter. We were getting stops, we were getting scores. Huge three by Ryan. When you're feeling it, you're feeling it. It doesn't matter where you are on the floor. Another tough defensive stop. Molly's running the floor hard. We find her for a layup. Here's the final shot. Super exciting. Super proud of this team. Like she said, my name is Cooper Corbin. I'm a senior and I'll graduate in May as well. I'm an industrial engineering major. Um, um, <laughs> if we beat BH on uh, Friday, we'll clinch the fifth seed, which will be the highest we've ever been. We've made playoffs uh, two of my other years here, and we've always been the eighth seed. So um, it's exciting that this is the best that we've ever done, and it's kind of nice to have my senior year. So. Um, that's about it. Any questions? Do yeah. you have a job yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One of my favorite parts about <clears throat> watching the highlight reel is not, I mean, this is my top favorite, but my favorite is, is watching the men's basketball team go off in the background. Oh, yeah. Like when they're sitting up in the stands yeah. and like they, they get off every time you guys do something big. So I'm kind of how does that support kind of help you guys? Because I think when we have your conference team stuff with us and play, you watch a lot of those other teams just kind of sit there in the stands. Yeah. And maybe they're there, maybe they're not, but they're just there. Yeah. And I think it was so cool that I thought our men's team was there to actually be in, like, engaged on what's going on. So. I think it's really cool because I think almost every highlight reel, if the camera's on that side, then you can see them stand up, put their feet up, and all that stuff. And I think it's fun because, I mean, I don't think either team loves having to travel together. But just, I mean, that's what it is, and embracing it and cheering each other on. And um, we like it when we win and they win. And when we lose, they lose. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we're excited for them to be in playoffs for the first year uh, this year, too, and just keep it rolling with both of us. I just have a comment, and this can go to you your coach, Coach Glenn, gets me because it applies to both of them after what I watched Saturday night. Two things came to mind. Which I, but care, we've had a lot of teams with care, and both teams showed tremendous character, very difficult environment. The second word that came to mind, but quite honestly, I don't know if I've used this word very often, guts. These two teams showed more guts Saturday night that I've seen in my rocker team in a long, long time. Guts, guts, guts. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. When, when you guys were down 19 to 2 from a team, team perspective on the floor, did you guys kind of feel like it was going to turn around for you at some time? Or? Yeah, it was just like a, it was one of those times where you're playing and then you look at the scoreboard and you're like, oh my 
gosh, like you have no idea that you're down by that much, but you know things aren't going great. But I think everyone just kept like a positive attitude and you know just kept clapping like we got this. Like our shots can't stay like this forever. Um, so yeah, there was like a sense that we knew. Minister, no matter what happens, what shakes out, um, based on kind of our research, those are the two teams that we think we might be facing um, next week. But right now, our focus is on senior night on Friday and um, just enjoying enjoying playing together on the hard rocker floor um, one last time for our seniors. Any other questions for me before I take off? Maybe just create some awareness of Anna Haugen. Oh. Anna Haugen reached a tremendous milestone this last weekend. Um, she got her 900th rebound. She's now fifth all time in rebounds in school history. Um, and she's also two points away from 1,000 points. Um, tried to get her 1,000 point at Colorado Mines, but um, apparently she wanted to save it for senior night in front of all of the fans here. Um, and speaking of fans, we have tremendous parents, tremendous um, support from all of our kids' families. Um, I feel we truly have a home court advantage every single time we're on the road in Colorado. Um, I think there's probably 30 to 40 people there um, just from their families alone that come and cheer us on. That was a huge help this weekend combined with you know, the men's support as well. So it's, it's exciting when we're on the road and we have, we have that kind of support. So thank you guys very much for that. And we'll hopefully see you all Friday. Good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the women are right. They set the tone for us, so I was really upset with them after their game on UCCS. Because <clears throat> I kind of knew what was coming after that. If they, if they don't play well, we don't play well. So, no, I actually, uh, I thought going into the UCCS game that we, uh, it was one of those things, you know, we're kind of blazing a new trail, something that we haven't been a part of yet here in the RMAC since we've been in the RMAC on the men's side. So, as we get into those situations where we start playing for something, we actually talked about that on Friday afternoon about uh, you know controlling what we can control, uh, going out and playing with a lot of poise, and not thinking about you know what the consequences are whether we win or lose in that game. And uh, and I still thought that you know we still kind of played that way a little bit going into that game, and I, and I think that was a little bit part of it, especially on the offensive side. It, we really were pressing. We weren't the loose offensive team that we had been over the previous six games where we got wins. And, uh, and a little bit too, as, as, as probably the scout, and that's my fault, you know, a little stubborn at times, uh, but we, we, we guarded him a certain way on a high ball screen, and uh, it wasn't working. And we did make that adjustment at halftime, which did help us out. Uh, but even going into it watching tape, you know, I saw a team was guarding a certain way, but it wasn't the way that we usually do it. And sometimes I can get a little stubborn and say, no, that's not the way we do things. but. Uh, but we were able to make an adjustment on that in the second half. And quite honestly, you know, it was, a, it was not a pretty game for us, uh, especially on the side. We had 19 turnovers, and uh, which is very uncharacteristic of us as we're averaging right around 10 a game, I believe it is. And so we weren't, uh, we just, like I said, we forced a lot of things. We were, we were not making easy plays when they were there available. And, uh, and we kind of, at times, were a little hasty offensively. So with those all those combinations, it just didn't make for a great offensive night. Yet I think it was at the three was a three thirty mark, coach. At the three thirty mark, we're down six, and we miss. We get a stop in between two missed layups. If we make those two layups and continue to get that stop, it's a two point game. So I thought our resilience was still there. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still recovering as well from the cold, but um, I thought our guys played extremely hard. Uh, that, that was not the, the effort was not a, was not a problem for us. And that's what I was really proud of is that, you know, we had really, like I said, over six games, things had pretty much gone our way right from the tip to the end. And so to be able to face adversity on the road like that, 
Um, I didn't see any quit in our guys. I didn't really see frustration in our guys. Uh, it was just this fact that we could never really get on track offensively. And, and that was just a little disappointing, obviously. But UCCS is a really good team. It's, I know we made them look pretty pedestrian here. We played an incredible game here. And, and quite honestly, you know, everybody plays different at home than they do on the road. Uh, but if you look at their statistics, they are amazingly different at home than they are on the road. And that showed again. They had some guys hit a lot of shots they, they normally don't hit. Uh, they didn't hit them the weekend before when they were on the road. They really struggled to, to shoot them. And against us, they made them. And so those are kind of some things that we talked about we don't necessarily control completely. And uh, so you get tap your head to them because then they turn around and beat a, obviously a good BH team the next night also. Um, we need them to be bad at home this week against Colorado Mines though. So hopefully maybe the law of averages will work out just a little bit in our favor when it comes to that. Uh, the, obviously the next day we get our, really our just total focus was, hey, we need to embrace the moment that we're in, have fun, don't look ahead, and just really enjoy the opportunity that the guys have created for themselves throughout the entire season to be able to already have beaten Colorado Mines at home, to be at their place, playing for an opportunity to get into the playoffs, and to uh, to actually get a sweep on the year, which we had never done before with them. And, uh, and just really enjoy that opportunity and stay in the moment. Don't, don't dwell on the past, don't look too far in the future, just really stay and play play by play. And I thought our guys just finally really executed that mental mentality. Because um, the start was not great for us. They came out pretty hot, knocked down some shots, and jumped on us early with a double-digit lead. Um, but yet, I never saw any panic in our guys, much like the women. Uh, we weren't as down quite to the point that they were. But it was a situation where, you know, when you're at Mines and the experience that we've had there with some games in the past, you know, generally they would pull away and uh, they would probably throttle us. And quite honestly, is what had happened before. And our guys just had great determination, great poise, and just great resilience to continue to battle with about uh, four and a half left in the first half. It's still a 10 point game. It was 30 to 20, and we went on a 14 to 3 run in the half, and which really propelled us into the second half. We played it just a great second half against them. Our defense, I thought, was very good, even though I believe they scored pretty close to 40 points, which is a little high for us. Um, but some of those were kind of towards the end, and we're, we're trying not to foul them, and then we kind of let them get to the basket on us. But I really thought the defensive effort for that, because that's a very good offensive team, and in their own gym, they're obviously very good. And, and it was a, a hostile crowd in some respects, but to piggyback off what uh, Jerry said, uh, we go there all the time, and we have a tremendous crowd. And there have been times when we've played them when the students aren't there because it's over at Christmas break or something, and we've had more people in the gym at South Dakota Mines because of the families that are there. Uh, our alumni is incredibly supportive. Uh, I saw so many former players there Saturday night, and I really appreciate them that they come back and to, and to really come and support us. Uh, obviously, it's great to see them and that they're doing well and hear their stories and how they're growing into great young men and developing families and stuff, but to have that support is great. And, uh, and it was just awesome to see and when we were getting on a roll and things were going and their crowd was very quiet, uh, we were making a lot of noise and it was loud in there and it was all hard rocker fans and that was really cool to see. And what's even better is that when they come up here, they have nobody. So uh, <laughs> and so we get to go to a, kind of a second home, I feel like, when we get down in that area and it's really awesome. But uh, <clears throat> just to continue on with that game, um, you know, we were able to build a lead in the second half. Uh, they made a couple runs at us, which a great team was gonna do. And uh, we just continued to fight them off. And uh, our experience of being on the road finally really paid off for us. We played so many close games on the road. We had held, had leads late so many times on the road and, and uh, in the end, it essentially failed to hold those leads. Uh, but our guys have continued to work hard in practice to really uh, learn how to play in a time and score situation late. And uh, lap, on Saturday night, they just really executed it very well. Uh, even though a couple times we had nervous hands and the ball one time went through Damani's hands and hit him in the chest, uh, yet he was still able to come up with it. Uh, Troy had a hand basically bobble through his hands and go to the corner and he had to save it from going out of bounds and ended up, but having enough poise and, and just confidence in himself to find somebody and ended up finding Logan Ellers who found Mitch Zucker for a dunk. Uh, so, I mean, plays like that uh, are from experience and sometimes come from failure first. And it was really great just to see them to finally see some success 
in, in a late game like that. And I agree with Tom. I think it, there's a lot of guts. And it's a lot of guts to uh, just go ahead and, and finally carry it out and have success with that. So we are obviously very elated. Um, I, I don't know for sure. I haven't talked to Brad. I don't think we we ever won a Colorado Mines as a program. And I don't I know we've never swept them before. So there was a lot of firsts there. And, and we've won three in a row also. So that's really really impressive feat for our guys to be able to do that. So um, before I bring up my player here that I brought, we do have a special guest uh, all the way from New Zealand. I want them to go ahead and stand up. Is uh, Logan's parents, Mark and Tracy. Uh, they've been uh, empty nesters here for the last year because their daughter has actually been going to school at Colorado State as well, and she's been able to come to a game or two down in Colorado while we're down there. And so they <coughs> had to come to the States to see the rest of their family. And so it's uh, it's great to have them here, though. Um, I think the last time you were here was Logan's visit, correct? Is that right? Oh, it, or what was it? Freshman, freshman year, that's right. Freshman year, you were able to make it one time back for freshman year. So it's been uh, almost four years since they that last game. And uh, so it's great that they're able to make it back for those games and be here for senior night coming up on Friday. Uh, it's going to be a great experience and uh, really happy that they're here because uh, I know that it's, uh, it's not the easiest drive from New Zealand. <laughs> so, uh, uh, with us today is uh, Tristan Bonita. Come on up here, Tristan. Did you break the chair? <laughs> That's okay to be too happy in here. <laughs> so, Tristan here, he's been up here before, I know. Um, obviously, we, uh, we just really think the world of Tristan. more industrious than an extremely, extremely hard worker and a guy that really has uh, a lot of drive on his own. I mean, he's not a guy that just shows up to practice and works hard. He comes in and spends lots of time in the gym. Uh, this year definitely helps that he's a grad student, so he really doesn't have that many classes. So he spends a lot of his free time in the gym. Uh, but he has a passion for the game of basketball. Uh, it is in his blood bloodline. So but he has uh, done a great job. But the thing that I'm probably more proud of Tristan this year, and really all of our seniors is, is that uh, probably about a spot over a month, a month ago, uh, really challenged them about stepping up and, and really having more leadership role. I think we're doing a decent job, but I, I thought they could really do better. And we talked about how, you know, and I've said this before, how our great teams are player-led teams, they're not coach-led teams. And, uh, and Tristan, along with his three other seniors, have really done a great job. And Tristan, obviously, is one of our former seniors at start, and yet it has not stopped him uh, from having confidence. And because uh, the fact is, the guys really respect him because they know how hard he works. And uh, that's the thing that, thing that you know, when he does something, uh, the rest of the team really listens and takes heed to what he has to say. And so, I'm really proud of him to be able to step up there because that's not an easy thing to do. A lot of times for guys, they're always they're always a little shy because they're starting, or maybe don't play the most minutes. And and uh, Tristan has really taken on that leadership role and, and done a tremendous job with that for our team. It's been a big difference for us. It really has. And so we're really we're really proud of him for that. And I'll let him go ahead and talk a little bit here with you. Thanks, Coach. So like you mentioned, my name's Tristan. Uh, it's my fifth year here, redshirted. Uh, I'm a graduate student with the technical department. Uh, yeah, got my bachelor's degree last year. So yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long, pretty fun time here, obviously. It's really cool this year, first year, making, making the playoffs and back, coming from where we were when I first got here. Uh, Coach T, there was, a, there was a note that I mentioned at the end of our game, over in the locker room, Coach T asked me to share. <coughs> after, after that, my, my, my right year, I was, I was sitting here with one of, our, uh, one of my teammates watching the game. He was hurt. We were down at one point against mine, 63 to 19. And you know, it was it was a little bit of like like kind of to me something that we joked about. And then coming now, and really we are the superior program in my mind. I think in everybody's mind, all in our team, that's how we feel. So it kind of just shows the the step in the program in four or five years since I've been here. Um, yeah, it's really it's great to be a part of it. I uh, love my teammates. Really love this team. Having a lot of fun out there. So yeah, that's all I got. If anybody's got some questions, I'd love to ask you. Kristen, speak to the, go back a few years. Late, injured, yeah. had to stay out, stay out, came back, didn't get as much playing <coughs> as you probably needed. 
cut kept you going and kept you motivated. I know you're a high character guy. Yeah. But what what kept kept you going? I think injuries are you know they're tough, but they're part of the game. I think when you love doing something as much as I love basketball as the guys on the team love basketball, that's something that you deal with. You know you know you understand. They're probably going to happen. And if you if it happened to you, you just got to work through them, get yourself back on the court. It's not easy. Definitely was not easy for me. Uh, more mentally than anything. But yeah, I think it's really just looking at the game, loving out there with my teammates. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know yet. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm a Swiss citizen. So my mom's from Switzerland, so I think I might over there. Um, but it's just the basketball over work. I'm not sure yet. But we'll see. Anything else? Yeah. So Friday, Friday night we have a game. Yeah. Does that give you any extra incentive or uh, feelings about going into that game? I mean, I think you treat every every game the same way. You know, you're going into you have a certain process process of how you prepare, uh, and I don't think that changes week to week. Obviously, when you actually get to the game, it's a little different. There's more energy in the building. You're kind of up a little more, and you know this this has some like some some situations. If, if a certain if certain things happen all the right way, you know we can have a home playoff game. So yeah, there's there might be a little more motivation there. You know, when you actually get into the game, everybody's a little more up. But I think I think the process is absolutely no different than what it would be. Great. Anything else? Yeah. 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 So I think we have some highlights. Brad asked me, do you want any from the uh, UCTS game? I said, if you can find some, you're better than I am. So we're going to go with all minds here. And we did get, uh, you know, Logan obviously got off to a great start. Uh, uh, we knew we had an advantage for sure with Mitch at his spot, and I knew that Logan um, could do some great things against their pick, <clears throat> um, just because of the fact that, that footwork-wise, as you can see, that's tremendous footwork, <coughs> and really got on the path, got some spins going. <clears throat> this is one of my favorites. Just told us to leave it week, this past week, and this is a nice little runner that, uh, that he's always been able to do from the day he got here. Here's a nice little play we had here. Very good ball to Mitch. Mitch had obviously a tremendous game, led us in scoring. Shot the he's four for seven from the three, which is really what we come to expect out of him. Uh, Jack, being Jack, the silent assassin as we call him. And then uh, you know, Alec probably didn't have the, the, the biggest scoring night as he's had in the few last few games, but he did have 12 points and probably even bigger so is that he had uh, uh, assists. This is late in the second half, our first half here, right at the buzzer. It was a nice little finish there, and to get us going into the locker room. And I think it really kind of set us up in the second half, to be quite honest. And then again, some more of us in the post here. They come with double. Nice pass to Dumani. <coughs> Dumani finishes like he's capable of. Here's a heck of a pass. I think Alec had to hide back his head for that one. And then uh, again, Mitch. Hitting the three, that was actually after Dumani had got out on the drive, but we got the ball back and kicked it out to Mitch and took the three instead. Another nice find, Dumani cut to the basket here for Mitch when he came to double. Dumani's been doing a terrific job of really finding some cuts and finding some open spots when his guy goes to help. And this is late. Uh, obviously, Alec had fouled out at this point. Uh, Dumani here, uh, I think and we talked about this as a team. You know, at the beginning of the year, we probably get a foul on that on a charge. You might even have the presence of mind of not getting the charge there. And then this is a great play. They had just hit a three to bring it to two. And then uh, we made two great passes to get Jack the three there to take it back to five. And that was really a big point in the game. And this is the point here where we're talking about we kind of were almost falling out of bounds. And that had just a good poise to stop the panic and find, find Logan here. Logan comes to the ball. Gets it and then just finds uh, Mitch right away and we get the breakaway dunk.
So that was uh, obviously a great experience. That was fun, great gaming. Um, this week, this week coming up with Black Hills, I think Tristan said it best. You know, uh, it, it, you can't help but to know that it's a, it's a big fun game because of the atmosphere uh, that a lot of people that it brings. Obviously, they get to bring their student body because they're so close, and so the gym's going to be pretty electric come Friday night and stuff. But for us, we are. We, we go through the same process. It's like any other game. Um, he alluded to the fact we usually don't even we don't talk about any of these things uh, other than the fact that we kind of have to plan a little bit. And so we did talk about a little bit of our seating opportunities yesterday, which is probably the first time we've really truly sat and talked about anything with, as far as standing to go with our guys. Uh, just because we have to prepare for missing class possibly, um, or we, even with the administration, we could possibly host a game um, next Tuesday. So it all depends. We would need a little help with that if that were to happen. Um, so again, all we control is the fact is whether we can go out and play well against Black Hills. And I think if we play well, um, I think we'll like the result that, we, that we'll get. And we really look forward to it because it's a great opportunity, as we like to say, uh, or at least I like to say, it's, it's time for us to restore the order. I think they've gotten four on us in a row. Is that right? Four, maybe? Yeah, there's four in a row they've gotten. So uh, we had won quite a few in a row before that. I can't remember how many it was. And so we've kind of flip-flopped a little bit. So I think it's time to switch it back to our side here. And we're looking forward to have that opportunity to do that. So any questions or comments? Clarify that for us, Harry. Uh, we have to take care of business. Then what would have to happen for us to get that? Forward? Well, the the easiest scenario for us would be for us to win, for Mines to beat UCCS, and for Western to beat Mesa. And then we would tie in a time with Mesa before, and since we beat them head to head, we would win that seat with the tiebreaker. If it comes down to a three-way tie between us and UCCS and Mesa. I really can't tell you how that shakes out. I haven't had time to look at the numbers <coughs> um, and see what happens with that. It all depends on what people's final records are and stuff. So we'll see how that, if that happens, it can shake out. I just know that we can finish anywhere from fourth to sixth, basically, uh, depending on whatever happens Friday night. How do you feel like kind of looking at the beginning of the season where you started to where you are now? playoffs and potentially being able to host the game and uh, I guess just talk to the, the team's growth for the year. Yeah, well, I think we're exactly where I thought we could be, number one. And I think uh, all the guys believe that, too. Um, we still have some growing pains to go through a little bit. Um, I think, you know, you look at a game like Saturday night where it did finally pay dividends to play a lot of those really good teams on the road early. You know, play the Texas A&M Kingsville, who is, I think, their third in their league down there in the Lone Star League right now. You know, we led that game with 10 minutes, or by 10 points with like two minutes to go. And just uh, kind of squandered the lead. And that was kind of our first bad experience, and learning experience, I should say, <coughs> of a late game situation. Uh, you know, we played Carney at Carney in a tight game where we lost by one on the road. Uh, play the, in the, the uh, East-West Challenge against two really good teams in the state, Northern State, who won their side, and, and actually won the NSIC this year. And we actually were up one with a minute and a half to go, we're up one with a minute and a half to go against them. And then, of course, we beat a good, really good August Standard team who was ranked uh, earlier this year in the nation. So, you know, I think all those things, for me, I, you know, they're hard, sometimes hard to go through, and especially like this year where we probably lost more than we won in those situations. Uh, I think they really paid dividends in a league like ours where we play so many conference games. Because um, even in our conference, you know, we started off at Black Hills and then at the two Utah schools. So we started our first three games on the road as well. I think we started eight of our first nine on the road during the year. And so uh, even though we didn't come out of it as clean as we would like to have, uh, it was a, just a great learning, and I think it really made us a stronger team. And like I said, it's really paying dividends here in the second half of the season because we've been able to, uh, we've had some tough games. You know, where we probably haven't played our best, specifically on the road. We had, we probably picked three games for sure, where we just didn't feel like we played our best basketball. Um, but at the same time, we had some great resilient bounce backs. Uh, Colorado Mines was not the only one where we come back on a Saturday and play extremely well on the road. And so, uh, just those things, and I think that's what's really fun about the entire season, is to see that growth as you go through. And like I said, I thought we were a good team going into the season, um, and I think we were we proved that we were because we were in every game we played. Just being able to uh, find a way to finally you know, finish it and, and win the game is, was a thing 
for us to really figure out, and I think we're really starting to do that now. Anything else? Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing everybody Friday night. It's going to be a great night. Thank you.